Hi, today we're going to talk about spreads, chokes, and traps. Um, if you're in the printing industry, either screen printing, offset printing, um, you may or may not have heard these terms and you may or may not know what they mean. Let's get into what each one is and why they might be useful for us. We'll talk about spreads and chokes first and then I'll show you how you might use these uh, two techniques. We'll start with a spread. A spread just means exactly what it sounds like, spreading an image in all directions at once. So we're not enlarging it, we're actually adding to it, adding to the thickness. Um, and the easiest way to do that, uh, of course in the old days we used to use photographic film and different techniques, but now uh, that we have uh, vector programs, the easiest way is to add an outline to your vector object. And I use the term outline because I'm using Corel Draw. I'm not showing my toolbars because this is really not specific to a drawing program. If you're using Adobe Illustrator, this outline will be called a stroke. Either way, it's the same thing. So I've applied an outline to this letter A. And I've used the behind fill command on my outline pen menu. And what that does is puts the outline behind the fill so this doesn't change the shape of my red letter A it just adds an outline so half of this outline is actually behind the letter A we just can't see it now I've exaggerated this uh, on a normal print job you wouldn't be using nearly this much of a spread but as I said I exaggerated it so we can see it on the video now if I turn this letter A black, the same color as my outline. Now you can't distinguish between the outline and the letter. So this is a letter A with a spread and you can designate the width of the spread by changing the width of your outline. Once again, stroke in Illustrator. Now if I remove my outline you can see the effect here. And I'll go back and forth a couple of times. There it is with the spread and there it is normal. Okay, there's a spread and there's the normal shape. Now don't worry why we're doing this just now. We're just learning what a spread is. Now we're going to learn what a choke is. A choke is the opposite of a spread. Instead of spreading the shape outwards, you're choking it so that it, it uh, so it's reducing inward from all directions. Let's leave this same outline on here. Now remember this outline is behind my fill. So what that means is if I, if I go back to my outline pen menu and deselect this behind fill, now you can see that's the full outline because the uh, vector letter A is not covering up half of it like it was before. Now let's say I'm going to turn this outline white so that it matches the background of my of my paper that I'm working on. Now you can see that letter A looks skinnier than it used to. And that's because the white outline is actually choking that letter in on all it on all edges. I'll get rid of that outline so you can see what it looked like originally. Then I'll put the outline back. There's the choked letter A and the regular original and the choke and the original. So hopefully by now you know the difference between a choke and a spread. You know what each of those are. Now how might we use a choke or a spread on a print job? Let's say we wanted to print this tractor in two colors on a white shirt white t-shirt. Uh, the two colors being yellow and black um, I could print this gray as a third color but uh, let's pretend I'm gonna do the gray as a half tone of the black so this is just gonna be a yellow and black print job. Now if uh, you're a an offset printer you definitely want to use some trap here um, this is uh, mainly a screen printing video so if you're a screen printer and your press can hold tight registration as most presses should if they're adjusted properly. 
and if you're using good tight, uh, tightly uh, stretched screens, you're just going to want to do the yellow and the black as what's called a butt registration, which means there's no overlap at all. The yellow goes right up to the edge of the black. And once you're in good registration, you should be able to print this wet on wet without any, uh, without any trouble. And um, if it's a little bit off, your print, of course, is going to look a little bit off. So you want to be in perfect registration if you're going to use butt registration. Now, if you're just learning to register your press um, and you're having a little bit of trouble getting it just right, or if you have a press that has a little bit of slop in it, I would, I would work on the adjustment first. And if you can't really get it to hold a tight register, you may want to trap this. And of, of course, a trap will mean that your yellow will slightly overlap your black so that if it moves a tiny bit, you won't see that white gap in between, uh, between the black and the yellow. If you do decide that, that's when we're going to apply a spread to our yellow so that it slightly overlaps the black. Let's zoom in and take a look. I'm going to apply an outline to my yellow and I'm going to do the outline in the same color yellow so that we can see what happens. And just like before, I'm exaggerating the width of the outline. You wouldn't use nearly this much. I'm just doing this so we can tell on the video what's going on. Now, you can see that that spread my yellow to overlap my black. And I'm going to turn this yellow semi-transparent now so we can actually see what we've done. And now you can see the yellow. And this brownish color is the yellow overlapping the black. So you can see this is trapping to the black. And this will make my registration much easier. And once again, this is way too much trap. I've just uh, done that to exaggerate it so the, it will show up clearly on the video. When you actually do a trap for a print job, it'll look more like this. Just a real little bit of overlap between the black and the yellow. I find a uh, general rule of thumb is if you give it point, point 0.4 of a point for the thickness of the line, That'll give it a uh, 0.2 of a point, so 2 tenths of a point trap. Because once again, the trap is going to be half in the, on one side and half on the other side of the edge of your vector shape. So of course, you'd, uh, you'd eliminate the transparency and turn this black for your film. Now, while we're talking about traps, um, I want to show you something I've done in the past. I, I don't know if I plan to do it anymore. Um, it's something I've experimented with, but I did want to mention it to you in case you might want to try it yourself, see what kind of a result you'll get. We're back to, if you remember, butt registration, in which uh, these uh, shapes exactly line up with each other. There's no trap at all. And if you're printing a very light color, such as this yellow, against a, uh, or trapping it to a black or dark blue or something, and you're using a butt register, and you find that you're getting a little bit of fuzz here on your wet-on-wet -wet printing, you might want to see if you can improve your quality by using this technique, which, as I said, I've tried it one, uh, several times, numerous times. and uh, I'm usually pretty happy with the results, but then I found over the years that it's really not necessary. But you might want to try it, depending on what type of inks you're using, how long of a press run you're doing, and the complexity of the design. In this case, I'm going to do a choke on my yellow shape. I've done that by applying a white line, just like we did with that letter A a little while ago. And uh, because the, the uh, outline is, uh, I want to keep saying it again and again, right on the edge, this actually chokes my yellow in away from my black. Now, uh, 
as uh, I've been doing, I'm exaggerating the amount of choke. You don't want a big gap like this showing when you actually do it. Um, what you want is uh, for it to look a little bit more like this. Kind of like that, just a little sliver that'll improve your edges of your uh, yellow where it meets the black. And when you zoom out, it shouldn't be noticeable as long as your registration is tight against a white shirt. Here we are zoomed out and as you can see, you're not going to notice this on a t-shirt when you step away like this. And um, it may result in crisper lines here. I think if you add a little bit of reducer to your inks, it'll uh, actually achieve the same thing. And that's how I've been doing my uh, wet on wet prints, especially when I'm using yellow ink. That seems to cause the most trouble with the uh, black. If you're using a darker color, such as this red, I don't recommend doing a reverse trap like this because as you can see that it makes it more noticeable you can see that white peeking through and it's not as necessary red against the black shouldn't cause you any trouble with a with a regular butt register it's only the yellows um, light orange things like that that sometimes seem to um, interfere when you're trying to butt register it and uh, every now and then you might want to apply a what I call a reverse trap like this and see how that works for you Okay, let's talk about uh, another use of a trap, and that's with an underbase. Let's say we're doing a design something like this. Uh, let's pretend the shirt is black, like uh, this uh, black square here. And we're going to print white and this light orange on our black t-shirt. And we might decide to use two different opaque inks, or we might decide to print the white as an underbase for your orange. In which case, you'd print the white of the musical notes and your text in white on one screen and your orange as an overprint for this white on the other screen. Now this is where registration is going to be a problem for you because if these are perfectly matched up, the orange and the white, it's almost impossible to get it lined up so you won't see a little bit of white peeking out. Um, once again, I'm exaggerating. But you don't want any of that white looking around from behind the orange print. So to accomplish that, we're going to use trap again. So I'll zoom in again and we're going to give this a little bit of a trap that will make it easy for us to line up when we're on press. So here it is with an outline or causing it, the type to spread, which will give us a trap against the white. So here it is without, here it is with, and as before, I'm exaggerating the amount of trap just to make it easy to see on the video. And I'll go ahead and give it a transparency so you can see the effect of the trap. You can see this uh, brown area here is where the yellow overlaps the black and the white behind it. And because it's transparent, the outline is appearing as a separate color, but it's really the same yellow as the rest of the text. So once again, when I make my screen, I'm going to turn that solid black. A good trap I found for trapping something like this, of course, it's going to depend on how large of an image you're using, how fine the detail is. If you start with about a 1.4 points, um, once again, it's going to be half in and half out, so that's going to give you a, a 0.7 of a point of overlap between your white and your yellow. And that's a good place to start. If you have a real tight press, you can go lower than that. If your press is a little sloppy, you might want to go a little bit higher. The higher you go, the, uh, the, the more rough your edges are going to appear because it's going to be the yellow uh, printing on right on the black t-shirt where it overlaps instead of on the white underbase where you want it. 
So you use as, as little trap as you can get away with on an underbase uh, for the best quality of a print. Now in this instance we used a spread for our trap, but there are times you might want to use a choke for a trap as well when you're using an underbase. Let's look at an, an example. Let's say our design looks something like this. We're still going to print it as white and yellow, and don't forget there's an underbase back there. So we still want to do a trap for the yellow against the white underbase. These black notes are just the black t-shirt showing through. So if we spread the yellow the same way we did before, you can see that it messes up our notes a little bit. It gets uh, makes the notes skinnier because we're spreading the yellow into the black. We'll go back and forth. You can see the difference. Once again, this is exaggerated of a, a trap. So instead of spreading the yellow, I'm going to choke the white underbase. That way, it won't affect the integrity of my reversed out notes in here. So I'll zoom back in so you can see what we're doing. And I'm going to apply a choke behind this yellow on my white underbase. And now that I've done that, you can't see any different because I've choked the underbase, not spread the overprint. But if I apply a transparency like I did before, now you can see that trapped overprint, and it is exaggerated. Um, you'd use the same, uh, what I would start with, 1.4 of a point, which gives it a 0.7 trap. Uh, but the reason it doesn't mess with the notes is because, once again, this underbase in the back is choked back here. The overprint remains the same. So it doesn't affect the integrity of my skinny lines of the musical notes the way it would if I had applied a spread to the yellow like that. So if it's a design like this with something reversed out of your underbase and overprint, that's when you want to apply a choke rather than a spread. So there's some things for you to work on. Um, you'll use different techniques with different uh, designs, different print uh, colors, different uh, situations. And here are some things you can try. So experiment with those techniques and I hope your next project goes well.